Do you remember these things? Physical media? Yeah, about 10 years ago they were a really big thing, but thanks to the rise of streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime and everything else, there really hasn't been a need for them anymore. But as of relate, I've kind of noticed that many of the films that I want to watch simply aren't on any of these streaming services. But what if I told you that there was a way that you could create your own streaming service with all of the physical DVDs that you own and the films that you want to see? so you can watch them wherever you are without having to carry all the discs around. Well, stay tuned, because I'm about to show you how. Hello everybody, my name is Robert, and this is Review Queer. So yeah, it really is pretty simple to start creating your own media server out of all the DVDs and films and even music that you have. There are a few things you're going to need before we get started. You're obviously going to need a device to start running this thing on. Now this can be literally anything. This could be a Mac, this could be a Windows computer, this could even be a Linux box, even something as cheap as the Raspberry Pi. But do bear in mind if you want to start streaming high bitrate content to multiple people at once, you're going to want something a little bit more powerful than a Raspberry Pi. In my case, I went with the desktop computer. I bought it online from eBay for, I think, £180, and it had a Celeron processor, 16GB of RAM. Obviously, I ripped out that Celeron almost immediately, replacing it with an i5, and I find that is the perfect amount of power. Obviously, as well, if you want to start burning DVDs, you're going to need a way to read the DVDs. If your computer or laptop doesn't have a DVD drive, then you're going to need to buy an external one, because otherwise there's no way for you to burn these to a computer. Without further ado though, let's jump over to my computer and we'll start talking you through the whole process. But before we do that, if this is the first time that you're seeing my face on your screen, then one, lucky you, and two, go down there, hit the subscribe button, smash that bell notification icon so you get notified every time I upload. But let's stop chatting and let's start doing it. Here is how you're going to set up your very own Plex server. Okay, so here we are in front of my desktop. So we're obviously going to be walking through on a Windows computer here, but the process is very, very similar for basically every other platform. The first thing we're going to go ahead and do is load up the link that's in the description down below. That's where we're actually going to be downloading the Plex server software from. Now, as I noted before, Plex can be run on basically any kind of hardware. If it has a CPU and GPU, it can probably run Plex. But of course, in my case right now, we're going to be running off of Windows. So in that drop down menu, we're just going to choose Windows and click that download button. Once that downloads complete, we run through the install. That's Plex installed. It really is that simple. But of course, there is a little bit more to setting it up than that. Once that download is complete, you probably notice that nothing changes. There's no UI that shows up. You don't see an icon on your desktop. There is one icon and that is down in the bottom right here. So in your notifications bar, you can right click on Plex and click open Plex. And what that's going to do is that's going to drop you into the Plex web UI. This is where you're going to be doing all of your watching and management from. So the first thing that we're going to see is the what's new on Plex and what's on now on Plex. So Plex, you can technically use this without providing any of your own media. Inside of the movies and the TV section in Plex, there is a ton of different films that you can go ahead and watch right now. You will have adverts, that's how they're funding this, but you can watch any of these for free right now. But let's say that none of these films are to your taste and you want to start adding your own. Well, let's go ahead and take a look in the music folder for my server. It says it's empty, and that's because I haven't uploaded any music yet. And if I had, maybe we just haven't said, told Plex where to look for this media. So what we're going to go ahead and do is click Manage Libraries. When we're in this Manage Libraries section, we can see a few different options for films, TV shows, music, games and photos. In this case, let's edit the Photos Library. So we'll click Edit Library. So we're going to choose Films, Add Folder. And we can see where Plex is looking for this media. In my case, it's just looking in my videos and films folder. If I want to, I can browse for other media locations. For example, for whatever reason, you might have them on your desktop. You just click desktop and click add. It's now going to look for films in your desktop as well as this film environment. 
And that's pretty much it. You've now configured your server to look for films in specific places and once it finds them, it will do most of the rest for you. When we go back to the home page, we can go ahead and choose from the Mitchell Media server, the film section. These are all of the films that I have burnt from DVD directly onto my server. I didn't have to do anything else other than just tell Plex where these files were. All of the metadata has been gathered by Plex and it is super duper cool. For example, let's take a look at Big Hero 6 here. When we click Big Hero 6, the little icon on the little name underneath, we will see quite a lot of information. This is very much like a Netflix UI. You're seeing the photo itself for the film. You're seeing the year it was produced, how long it is, the rating, and also the little synopsis. But potentially some of the coolest stuff is happening underneath with the cast. So for example, I want to see what other films Jamie Chang Chung is on. This is just in my folder. This isn't films everywhere on the web, unfortunately. I don't know if there's a way to do that. But for in this case, she is only in Big Hero 6 in my film library. But if we were to go to Beauty and the Beast instead, and we were to choose Emma Watson, we see every film that Emma Watson is in that I own and have on my server. That's obviously all of the Harry Potter films. And that is pretty much it. As soon as you're ready to start watching, you can do so from your server here, for example, by just clicking one of these options and beginning to watch. It really is that simple. Or you can download one of the many Plex clients. As long as you log in with the same email address that you use to set up the server, it should automatically find it. If it doesn't, there are a few ways that you can manually set it up. It is worth noting that if you are outside of your home network, you may need to open ports and do some port forwarding on your router. If you don't know how to do this, I'll leave a link in the description down below because it's quite an involved process that's very specific to many different routers. So the way to do that will be in the description down below. Just follow that guide. It's super quick and super easy. Okay, so how are we actually going to burn these DVDs to our server? Well, there are two pieces of software that we're going to need to be able to do that. The first is called Handbrake. Handbrake is literally just going to take the contents of the DVD and put it into a film file ready to be found and used by Plex. But many DVDs have copyright protection and some copyright protection is worse than others. Disney's is particularly prolific and awful. But what's nice is when you download VLC player to start to watch these types of films, there's a piece of code in there that automatically decodes and lets you view these files. So Handbrake can just piggyback off of that and override any kind of copy protection that may be in place. So I'll leave links in the description to both VLC and Handbrake. But once you've got Handbrake actually set up, you'll see a UI much like this one. In my case, I've got Charlie and the Chocolate Factory booted up onto a DVD right now. The first thing we're going to need to do is click open source and choose where this file is. In my case, we're running from the DVD drive. This scanning process can take quite a while. It will take up to about 10 minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. I'm going to skip and just jump back to things when it's all set up. Okay, so that actually didn't take very long at all. That's all done now. And we can see in the titles that we have two titles of varying lengths. Now, when you're running these and just burning DVDs, you'll want to look for the title that has the longest playtime. That's normally the film itself. For TV shows, you'll see many different episodes of about the same length. So you're looking for the ones that are 45 minutes or an hour. Once you've decided on the title that you want to burn, you've got all the settings along the bottom here for video, audio, subtitles, chapters. Now these are all things that you're gonna to need to play with yourself. I found settings that work great for me, but what works great for me may not work great for you. If you want higher bit rates that might put a little bit more pressure on the server and the devices receiving this stream, then you can go ahead and do that. But I've got mine quite low just because I don't really notice a difference, quite honestly. Once you've chosen the quality that you're looking for, what we're going to go ahead and do is hit browse and choose where we're going to save this film. So in my case, it's going to be in the films folder. So I've actually already burnt this one. I can see it in the Willy Wonka here, but we'll click save and it will say, hey, do you want to override this file? It won't ask you to do this. That's just because I've already burnt this one. 
we can then click the little arrow next to the add to queue we can click add current and what this is going to do is just add the current scene that we've chosen once we're inside of our queue here we can see the one film that it's going to burn out and then once we click start queue it will start its burn process and as long as we're saving these films to where Plex knows to look for it we're good the rest of it happens almost instantaneously and magically. The actual burn process will take a long time. For me, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour for one film to burn, and that is quite a long time, but it's a process that I'm willing to take just to be able to have all of my films that I enjoy in one place where I can stream it wherever I am. Many of the films that I have on here, I simply can't watch on things like Netflix or Amazon Prime. So there we have it, guys. That is just how simple it is to be able to start burning and creating your own Plex server with all of the DVDs and films that are right for you. Did you find this tutorial useful? If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have any questions, also leave them down there. I'm always very active in my comment section and will answer basically any question that you guys may have. Anyway, my name's Ben Robert. This has been Review Clue, and I will catch you in the next one. Adios.